Hey YouTube, what's up? In this video here today I just wanted to show you a couple of the little tiny things I've been doing um, lately to get this quad build going along. Um, I wanted to try to do good videos and um, show every step I can so I don't want to get too far ahead without recording anything. So the last time you saw me you know, soldering the motor wires to the ESC here and uh, re-shrink wrapping those and I did, I did four of those. Um, so I'm trying to plan out how best to do the, the build video where I attach the arms to the mainframe. Um, and the reason I'm trying to plan that out is because I'm doing something, uh, a lot of guys are doing this, but uh, the basic kit just has those, uh, those plates, you know, the bottom and top plate. Let me, uh, let me grab one here real quick and show you. So you got these bottom and top plate, or sorry, bottom and middle plate and the arms go in between these you screw them together uh, not this messy of course but um, and then you have your standoffs and the top plate goes on a little bit higher so it's kinda like a sandwich um, but what I'm doing to try to keep a nice clean tidy build and um, keep all the electrical connections nice and neat and short is I'm using something called a PDB power distribution board so this one is um, Bought it from a quadcopter um, FPV aerial uh, RC company called uh, Team Legit, and this one was made by a guy named Wads O Quads. That's what his username is on the forums and stuff. And he uh, designed this uh, electrically designed this power distribution board and got it uh, manufactured. And then he's crazy enough to, in order to help get it out to people, he soldered all these little components all the uh, it comes with LEDs on it already soldered in all the resistors super tiny I mean he, and he did all of those on like 1500 boards all by hand so the dude is amazing um, just a couple things that you have to do yourself one of which is uh, install the capacitor on here helps to uh, clean up the you know you're supplying this with either 12 volts or uh, 14 something volts if you're running a 4S pack and um, so it's got some voltage regulation going on here all these little components uh, regulate the voltage down to uh, sometimes you need 5 volts for your flight controller um, 5 volts for the receiver uh, some of the cameras uh, FPV cameras only take 5 volts so um, all these components here are here to help uh, clean up the electrical flow as it comes from the battery pack and goes through the board. Um, you can kind of see, if you get the light right, you can see the traces, you know, see them underneath there uh, going from each place. So anyway, what I did is to start getting the board ready for assembly. I went ahead and I, I tinned all the motor pads. These are where the uh, ESCs will connect. Um, this little tiny one there, it says M2. That's where the signal wire for motor 2 will jump off of. You got a positive and negative pad for the uh, power to the ESC. Um, over here, this will be motor, which one is this? This is motor 4. Um, so you got the same positive and negative pads. You got the M4 signal pad, and then there's also that BEC positive, so you can run your uh, the power from the BEC circuitry out of the ESC, the battery eliminator circuit, um, to feed power back into the board somehow. You got the same thing over here for, which motor is this? This is motor 1 and then motor three so I went ahead and tinned all those pads uh, a couple other pads to go for are the the built-in uh, traces for the buzzer and VBAT so what VBAT does that's gonna go to um, some designated ports on the flight controller and let you monitor the battery voltage remotely um, and then buzzer there's a buzzer that I had to install this this guy here uh, soldered that in from below, cut the wires off, and then um, just to help avoid any crashes, uh, help avoid any problems there, I put a little hot glue on it, try to hold it in place. Same thing with the capacitor, I put a little hot glue on there to uh, hopefully keep it attached to the board uh, in the event of a crash, which we know there will be. Um, so these pins right here that I soldered in, uh, those are pin, the, those motor signal pins, so you can see 
it says M1 through 4 and then you have BEC and ground. So BEC and ground is going to bring the uh, 5 volts positive voltage on BEC and then a ground wire um, when you're when you're bringing the uh, power from one of these ESCs on, on the arms. Um, each one of these pins, M4, that that this pin right here, M4, goes through a trace over here to motor signal pad, M4, that little tiny guy. Uh, M3 and M, you know, M2 comes up to this one. M3 goes back over here to this one, and M1 goes down here to this one. So it's just the way the flight controller is gonna is gonna be sitting right above all these pins. So you you can keep your wiring real nice and neat and tidy. Uh, it's got provisions on here for soldering in your wires for your uh, camera. So this being the front of the quad, you're going to mount your FPV camera here. And uh, so you got little pads to keep your, cut your wires real short and solder them directly to the board. And you get the benefit of these, all these components here, uh, filtering the electrical power, uh, feeding the camera. Uh, back here it also goes to your, uh, your video transmitter. So, um, you know, I, I went ahead and got all those pads tinned and ready for, for work. I put a battery jumper on it, um, ran the uh, zip tie through the holes, and then I'll be actually coming back and feeding it out the back like that. So hopefully that zip tie provides a, a little bit of uh, stress relief so that you can't just yank it out right off the pads. It'll have to break that, break that uh, zip tie first. And... Uh, hopefully eliminate damage to the PDB. I bought a couple of these in case uh, for the future but anyway so that's one thing I was doing. The other thing that I did is uh, I got some LEDs and I just started playing around with them. So this is a special type of LED called a cob which is chip on the board. So rather than a floppy tape with a bunch of little tiny single element LEDs this one is as you can see it's really thin. This is actually a piece of aluminum here. I don't know how long this is, maybe four and a half, five inches long. Um, and all the little LED pin, all the little LED elements are in, in this basically like one big LED. Uh, this one runs on 12 volt. And the reason I bought this is uh, I saw this on somebody else's quad and I haven't seen it too much so uh, it's gonna look really cool. But basically uh, you get the effect of one long bar of light and uh, if you put that on the back of the quad it kind of looks like a thruster you know the mo uh, engines motors whatever you want to call them like on spacecraft uh, especially from the science fiction movie so this long bar here kind of looks like a thruster like a Millennium Falcon type thing so um, I've already kind of wired on the or soldered on the, the power for it um, just as a test and uh, so I kind of got that all hooked up here. This is probably going to blow out the blow out the video camera, but let's see if we can see what it looks like lit up here. Boom. Oh, yeah, so you can see the white balance on the camera totally went away, but anyway, so it's super bright, right? I mean, that that's bright. Wow, I can barely look at it. Super bright. Okay. So I bought a couple of those, one for the rear and one for the front, and what you can do and we're going to test it out right now. You get this stuff colored tape. Um, I got a purple and a, a green. Um, this is used for, uh, it says highlighter tape. You know, you mark up your textbooks or something uh, with this tape. And uh, as it says, a removable alternative to permanent highlighter. So you want to resell your uh, textbooks when you're done with the semester. You can pull all the highlights out and uh, sell them and you haven't you know defaced the book and it gets more value but basically I can put some of this tape over the uh, LED and and color it so as you saw it was super bright white um, we're gonna go ahead and, and try this put some coloration on it All right, got the tape ready Let's see how long of a piece I, can, I need here probably end up doing a couple a couple layers of this tape. So I'll do a couple layers and then just trim off the excess. Oh, that one wasn't long enough. OK, 
Okay, just to show you, it's very removable. There's not, wow, I pulled both of them off. Anyway, the, it's not very sticky at all, but it will, it will stay there if you're not tugging on it. And once I cut off this excess, I won't be tugging on it anymore. So let me put a couple layers on this and we'll check it out. Okay, so I've put a bunch of layers of the colored tape on here. Um, honestly, this is probably about six layers. And you can, you can barely make out the LED underneath it. Um, so anyway, let's try it. It's going to look super bright anyway, as we saw earlier. It just blows out the camera. But, um, go ahead and plug it in. So, it's really bright still. Holy cow. Um, it has a slight purple tint to it, but, and that's, like I said, six layers. So, I'm probably going to start looking around for some other, uh, other, other type of colored tape. Because this just doesn't, um, this just isn't providing enough purple. It's, it's, it's too, uh, I don't know, too uh, transparent still. I need more purpleness to it. Maybe I can look for some of those uh, colored uh, colored gels that they sell for like theater lights or something. But uh, anyway, so that's a couple things I've been doing just to get further along on this quadcopter build, um, which I'll have hopefully have a video up for doing the frame in uh, just a couple more days. So thanks for watching.